Hi there. When you examine CPU measurements in the mainframe environment, you will see that there's two measurements that not many people know too much about. The first one is titled Prism Physical CPU Time, and the other is titled LPAR Management Time. This video is the first part of a two-part series, and during this video I'm going to discuss these two measurements, and to make the subject a little bit more interesting for you history buffs, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background story. So I'm looking forward to spending my time with you. Hi there, my name is Peter Enrico from Enterprise Performance Strategies and my team and I are here to help you get great workload performance while optimizing usage of system resources in the mainframe environment. We created the Mainframe Performance Channel to help you with performance analysis, fundamentals and concepts. We are here to help you do what we do. Now if you're new here, click the subscribe button and any of the references I give in this video, I'll be sure to link in the references below. So let's get into it. You will always hear me say whenever doing a mainframe performance analysis, one of your first tasks will be to account for all the CPU time in your processor environment. And this is because the processor is probably your most expensive resource, and for many of you, it is also sometimes the most limiting resource. So accounting for all the CPU time is critical. Now on this channel, you will find that there's a three-part series titled The Seven Levels of mainframe CPU time, and I will be sure to link references for those videos here. Um, in those videos, I only touch upon the two measurements I will be, I will be discussing in this video, um, and they are Prism Physical CPU Time and LPAR Management Time. Now, the first measurement I want to discuss is Prism Physical CPU Time. Physical is a bucket of CPU time that PRISM maintains to account for all the CPU time that PRISM itself consumes managing all the system images. As a reminder, in today's mainframe computing environment, a customer can run multiple system images on a mainframe processor machine. The way this happens is that there's a facility named PRISM, and PRISM is a hypervisor. This means that PRISM is responsible for the virtualization of the physical resources of the machine to the individual virtual system images running on that machine. This way, um, each logical system image itself behaves as if it had the whole machine to itself and that there was no sharing of resources. Now PRISM, of course, needs to consume CPU to do this virtualization and to manage the system images. To account for all of this CPU time on the processor, PRISM accumulates the CPU time uh, into a bucket named physical. You can imagine when doing, uh, when a number of system images goes up, the ratio or the ratio of the, uh, the number of uh, logical processes to the number of physical processes is high, it is going to take PRISM more CPU time to manage the environment than the same machine with fewer system images or a configuration with a lower ratio of logical processes to the number of physical processes. For example, you can see in this image that there's a pictorial representation of a five physical CPU machine running two system images with a sum total of seven logical processors. Chances are that in this environment Prism CPU time, Prism physical CPU time, will be a spit smaller than, say, this image, which has the same machine running three system images with 13 logical processors. True, there were other factors that influenced all of this, but the point is that the more Prism systems uh, images that, that PRISM has to manage and the more logical processors configured to the machine or to the configuration, the more CPU time PRISM itself will need to use. It is the CPU time that PRISM spent managing all the system resources and the environment itself. As an analogy, I like to think of PRISM as almost like a juggler. And the more, juggle, the more balls that the juggler has to juggle, you can imagine that there's more effort being spent. Now, when reporting products report on physical, such as our product, the Pivoter product, um, reports um, do so at the logical partition level. There is no such a thing as a system image named physical. There is no LPAR. There is no system named physical. This is just a bucket of CPU time. 
The title given to this time is the word physical, and all usually it's in capital letters, and the word physical itself is usually preceded and suffixed with an asterisk. The next CPU time I want to discuss is titled LPAR Management Time. Now, LPAR management time is a bit different from physical CPU time of PRISM, where physical is a measurement of how much CPU time PRISM spent managing all the system images and the environment. The LPAR management time is time uh, PRISM spent uh, managing or doing work on behalf of a particular system image. So, for example, since the physical resources of the processor are being virtualized, the system images do not get to uh, execute certain hardware instructions directly onto the hardware. An example of such an instruction is a hardware diagnose instruction. When a system image needs to execute a diagnose instruction, it is PRISM that is handling that execution. The CPU time of the diagnose is then accounted for towards the time PRISM spends on behalf of that system image that is issuing the instruction. Now there's a lot of other stuff going on here, but hopefully you get an understanding of the basic concept. It is a bucket of CPU time we use to gain insights into the CPU consumption that benefits a system image, but is consumed by PRISM on behalf of that system image. Oh, and if you want a full understanding of uh, uh, this measurement, I should mention that you will not find LPAR management time in the SMF70 record for PRISM. It is, an actually, uh, it is actually a derived measurement. Uh, PRISM collects and feeds to the monitors two other measurements, and it is the uh, delta of these two measurements that gives us LPAR management time. The first of these two measurements is what we know as LPAR total dispatch time. And this is the total amount of CPU time consumed on behalf of a system image. The second measurement is what we call effective dispatch time. And this is the CPU time consumed by the operating system of the system image and all of its workloads. When these two uh, times are delted, that's how we get LPAR management time. So it's the amount of time that the LPAR was dispatched doing work, delted from that will be the amount of CPU time that the system image and its workloads consumed, and what's going to be left over is a small amount of time we call LPAR management time. Now if you can indulge me, um, the background of these measurements is a bit interesting. IBM introduced PRISM back in 1988 to compete with Amdahl's MDF hypervisor that ran on Amdahl machines. At that time, and until about 1990, there was no measurements like physical and LPAR management time. And the result was that some customers that migrated their MVS systems to PRISM noticed that their systems would use up more CPU time than when not running in PRISM. After some diagnosis, it was concluded that some of the additional CPU time consumed was being consumed by PRISM itself. At that time, I worked for IBM doing what's called measurement architecture for a product named RMF. As you may know, RMF is IBM's data gatherer for basic system measurements into SMF records. A competing product at the time of this video is CMF by a company named BMC. PRISM measurements are accumulated into the SMF Type 70 records and both RMF and CMF cut the same SMF70 record since all the measurements are itself from PRISM. The reason that the measurements are gathered uh, directly from PRISM with what's known as the Diagnose 204 instruction. You see, PRISM maintains all the machine uh, processor measurements and then any data gatherers such as RMF and CMF that want to gather those me measurements just have to issue the Diagnose 204 instruction. Now at that time I was working for RMF and was responsible for measurement architecture. This meant that I would work with different IBM hardware and software groups to figure out what measurements needed collecting and then I would design uh, and help write the code to collect these measurements into SMF records and then afterwards I would educate measurement product vendors so that they could do the same thing and understand the measurements. Um, anyway, so by 1990, I had already done a lot of work populating the SMF Type 70 record with PRISM hardware measurements that were available through the Diagnose 204 instruction. So anyway, one day I get called into this meeting to discuss the timing issues I just explained. In that meeting was the brilliant and unique 
Raja Huff, who I think of as the father of PRISM. Also at that meeting was the absolute amazing and brilliant Bernie Pierce, who till this day, 30 years later, probably had the largest impact of anyone in regards to IBM mainframe operating system performance design. For those of you who don't know, um, Bernie is the father of Workload Manager and is also responsible for so many MVS operating system performance features that today are still critical. Also in the meeting was the brilliant Gary King, who is another amazing smart guy who was a key hardware performance guy. Oh, and the fourth person in the meeting was me, a 28-year-old IBM associate programmer. So in that meeting, we discussed the problem, and Roger came up with a design to account for these CPU uh, new measurements. Uh, the next big issue was for them to convince me to book these into the RMF plans and to write the RMF code and to code the measurements into an SMF Type 70 record and then code the RMF post-processor reports for the updates. Surprising to them, I gave no bush pushback. Um, as I said, these men were brilliant and I knew that they knew much better than anything I was going to know at that time that, that was needed by IBM mainframe uh, customers. This shocked them. You see, they expected pushback from me at the time since the RMF product group was known for having too many projects and too few people to work on those projects. It was a running frustration for many design groups in IBM, uh, but my attitude was different. My attitude was I had already done a lot of work, a ton of work, uh, with the Diagnose 204 instruction, the SMF Type 70 record, and the RMF reports for CPU. So I shrugged my shoulders and agreed to work on uh, this right away. The, I, the RMF management at the time was not too pleased with me, but I stuck to my guns. Roger, Bernie, and Gary were all happy. The next thing was to name these two measurements, and I think it was Gary that came up with the name physical, and it was Roger who came up with the term LPAR management time. And Roger, to be fair, was known as a very tough person to work with, but he liked me. Uh, <laughs> and I remember working with him at his desk, going through the design and the code, and I liked Roger very much, and I laugh when I think of this story because um, at IBM at that time, you could not sneeze without formally booking a line item and going through all sorts of architectural review boards and project management plans and budgeting. The concept of agile development at that time was not even a thought back then. But with me, I just threw caution to the wind, I worked for a few weekends, and I just got, and I just coded the darn thing, um, the darn thing. Um, and I will admit, uh, now that the end of the video is here, that these are not the most critical measurements of major importance that you'll be working with in your career. But you know, I think of Roger and Bernie and Gary and the four of us in that meeting throwing around the names and of these two new measurements and how we were going to explain them to customers. As I said, these are not the most critical measurements, but even the most interesting, or even the most C interesting CPU measurements. But when I work with these measurements, I think of the wonderful opportunity I had working with these three IBMers, some of the smartest leading designers during IBM's heyday. Till this day, it puts a smile on my face. So with that said, look for part two of this video series, and I will show you how to actually look at these measurements and some report examples of physical and LPAR management time, and I'll discuss good and bad values. So until then, enjoy the day, and thank you very much, and I look forward to working with you in the future.